There have been many rumors going around the development of Halo Infinite since the announcement of the delay. Is 343 in development hell? Is the TV show holding back the development of the game as well? We'll stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again giving you another news and informational video when it comes to Halo. If you like this news and informational videos, please make sure to tap that like button as it lets me know you want to see some more content like this. It helps more people get a chance to see this video to stay in the know with everything going on with Halo. If you want to keep up to date with everything going on with Halo, make sure to tap subscribe as we ramp up to Halo Infinite's release eventually. Now ever since the reveal of the gameplay demo, honestly, since on July 23rd, we've had a lot of rumors going around about Halo Infinite eventually going towards the delay announcement till 2021. Now that's sparking some more rumors of why is this happening? Be, you know, a lot of people are speculating more than beyond what was stated by 343, mainly citing COVID, why this game is being delayed. Brad Sams, as, we, as we've talked about previously on this channel, has been making some waves within the Halo news sphere, and uh, 343 had to kind of go out and actually make some statements about what he's kind of claiming and what is actually happening on their end from what they're saying as well. So in this video, we're going to go into everything 343 has responded to when it comes to the rumors of developments with Halo Infinite. So one of the things that is mentioned about these recent rumors is that the Halo TV show is actually holding back the development of Halo Infinite. This insider information was originally posted up by Brad Sams and it's been getting a lot of traction. The Halo TV series was a big distraction and it kind of left the focus of actually getting this game out the door on the table. It wasn't just it wasn't the only priority, which was some of, some of the challenge. So 343 actually had a spokesperson go out to kind of lay out some facts and make sure to kind of quell some of the fears happening with the development of Halo Infinite. So as you probably could suspect that the spokesperson spoke rather nicely about the development of the game and the TV show, stating here that they are completely individual projects. And the development of the TV show and the development of the game are not anyway linked together. Quoting the spokesperson here saying 343 Industries has a devoted transmedia team that is working with Showtime on the creation and production of the Halo TV show. This group is separate from the Halo Infinite development team. These are two completely independent projects with dedicated teams and leadership that do not impact one another. Of uh, this statement, I do very much believe because there are multiple parts of 343 that work on different parts of Halo. Not all of 343 works on Halo Infinite. Now, originally the TV show and the game were supposed to release at the same time. Now, this actually might happen because the TV show was originally delayed till 2021. Now that Halo Infinite is delayed to 2021, they might be trying trying to link up those release dates together as the original intended idea was, which would make sense. Uh, but there are multiple teams, like you have the MCC team that's working on their own part of it. They don't, they're not affected at all by what's happening with Halo Infinite because they're working on MCC stuff. And then you also have the Transmedia team, which is a team that's dedicated on everything around Halo Infinite when it comes to media besides just the video games, so like the TV show, comics, books, things like that. And I could Im imagine that maybe some story elements are kind of held back but the TV show is something completely different there's no lore attached to uh, the Halo TV show it's not lore dependent it's not part of canon or anything like that so the TV show has the freedom to write the story that they want that can help make something that they can create really well kind of along the lines of what they did with like Game of Thrones where they kind of you know use the source material as like a good base but then kind of just went off on their own tracks when it comes to actually writing out the show so I can see maybe some kind of delays happening when it comes to possibly lining up these releases of the TV show and game now, though I can imagine also that they are not really that interconnected. You know, they're probably just trying to make sure they, you know, release the TV show at the same time as the game. So then the TV show gets rides that hype as well. That's probably the only kind of uh, distractions as the word that they use. I would see coming from the Halo TV show. Now the spokesperson doesn't really mention anything about another rumor going around about the outsource work and multiple teams working on Halo Infinite. Outsourcing has been a major component of 343's strategy for building out Halo Infinite. 
it. Now, one insider is saying that they're actually leveraging outsourcing more so than they are like a traditional gaming studio might be uh, accustomed to. They're over, over leveraging that capability and it's causing some issues, namely with collaboration. When you're working with so many third parties, it really does make things more harder to, to collaborate than working, just say, internally. If you don't know, it's more than just 343 making Halo Infinite. There are multiple teams that are working from home to try to put this game together. Now, when you hear that, you probably get really concerned because that's too many cooks in the kitchen kind of issue. Everyone's working from home. There's a lot of communication issues that could happen. And yes, that is very true. Your concerns are very valid. Though, this is very standard when it comes to game development, as many times when a game is trying to be, you know, developed before the release of it, you know, the, the studio gets bloated a little bit with hiring contractors. Now, Microsoft, is known for hiring a lot of contractors for multiple types of projects when it comes to making their products. I have worked on multiple projects as a contractor at Microsoft, and I can tell you for a fact that they re Microsoft as a whole relies on contractor work a lot. This doesn't mean that contractors don't provide great work. They certainly do. They might not be in it for the long-term investment like full-time employees are, but they want to try to put their best work forward because they can use this as leverage to get another job. I tried thinking of an example of a game that utilizes multiple studios to develop their game. One, Destiny certainly did that. Uh, another big game I'm sure you all recognize is Infinity Wars Modern Warfare 2019. You probably see Infinity Wars, the big developer. Yes, they are like the main heads behind the whole thing, but they also hired High Noon Studios. Beanox, Raven Software, and Sledgehammer Games all provided additional support when it came to developing Modern Warfare. And as Modern Warfare has a very large game with a great campaign, expansion of multiplayer and you have the PvE mode on top of Warzone. It's a pretty large game and Halo Infinite's kind of be kind of be about the same kind of size as well as I would assume with the amount of options that players have. So yeah, you would definitely need to bring in other studios. Not 343 alone can make this game. And yes, I'm sure a lot of people watching this video are not big Call of Duty fans. I've kind of lost fun when it comes to the multiplayer of Modern Warfare because of skill-based matchmaking and design choices that they made. But I can tell that Modern Warfare 2019 is the game Infinity Ward wanted to make. And I'm hoping for the same when it comes to 343 and Halo Infinite. And another big rumor that's been going around, I did touch on this a little bit about Halo Infinite being re potentially released in parts. 343 or Microsoft uh, was considering splitting up single player and multiplayer honestly around like December, like somewhere around there, like late 2019 or early 2020. Now that doesn't mean that was the definitive decision of, hey, we're absolutely going to do this. But that's when they started looking at their options. This was another news leak that was started out by Brad Sam saying that it was going to release with just campaign with no multiplayer. And then later on, Sketch went on Twitter to refute that. Then the tweet was deleted. Though later on, Phil Spencer on a podcast actually mentioned that how they actually did discuss potential potentially releasing Halo Infinite in sections, possibly with just campaign or just multiplayer, vice versa, things like that. And then so it kind of made Brad Sam's kind of look like he was correct, though he didn't report on it till about July. And so by the time he reported about that, the discussion probably happened and it ended and then Sketch went online and refuted his statements. Recently, Sketch actually went onto Reddit to clarify this more, which I think there definitely needs to be some more clarification because I feel like they're both right. Sketch went onto Reddit basically saying what, you know, what we're kind of saying is that was it discussed? Yes. Was it confirmed? Was it going to happen? No, because 343 recognizes that Halo Infinite needs to release as a total package as it's been a big issue with Halo games in the past. Though I I still feel that Brad Sams was correct, just that when he reported it, it was a bit late when they actually confirmed that they weren't going to do that. So is 343 in development woe and hell when it comes to making Halo Infinite? Probably not. I'm sure it's quite difficult. It always is difficult making a game in perfect conditions, much less trying to do it from home during a pandemic situation. Just it makes it more difficult. And so I understand why they need to delay this game. We all saw it from the July gameplay demo that the gameplay looked pretty good and the idea of Halo Infinite looks great. But what we actually saw for the visuals was 
a little lackluster and needs some more time. So let me know in the comment section down below what are your guys' feelings on these different rumors and speculations when it comes to Halo Infinite's development. Are you worried? Because if you are, it's rightfully so. There's been some issues that's definitely popped up. Are you not concerned? Let me know in the comment section down below as I do read all the comments and try to reply to most of them as well. If you guys are new to this channel or miss any content from me, check out the videos on the screen right over here. Got a link to all my news and informational videos if you've been out of the loop for the last few days or so. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.